welcome to my corner. Welcome to my corner. Let's have a talk now. From Miami to California. Yeah. Check your girl out. I'm gonna give it to you straight up. That's right. That's right. Keeping it real. No things inside. Welcome to my corner, y'all. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the corner. So as you can see from the title, you already know what we're about to talk about. So first, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe on this video, and let's get into it. So today is May 6th, and Netflix has just dropped the Becoming Michelle Netflix documentary. It is based upon the book um, that she released, I think last year, the year before, I don't know, but she released a book. And um, this documentary is following her on the tour. Um, and so I saw the promo on Instagram about two weeks ago and I wrote it in my calendar that I needed to watch this documentary because I have the book on Kindle, but I haven't had time to read it because I've just been swamped. But now that we're in quarantine, I should probably go sit down and read it. I'm going to it because of the documentary. But anyways, so um, I was excited to watch this. I was excited to get to know Michelle. Um, so, you know, we know who the Obamas are. Like, they were our first black black presidents. They will forever be great people in our hearts. We love the Obamas. We love their style. We love their grace, right? I remember when I was 17 and they got elected into the White House. I remember we were living in Brunson, the Netherlands, and we were six hours ahead of America. So it was like six it was 10 o'clock y'all time I think or maybe I don't know what time but I just remember it was super early and I had to go to school the next day and my mom was screaming up the stairs like hey come downstairs hurry up hurry up and I came downstairs and my mom was sobbing watching the television and she was like do you know what just happened today she was like this is history she was like there's never supposed to be a black president your president is black do you know how hard your grandmother and your great great grandmother fought to see this day and you're witnessing it and i remember watching my mom cry and i was just looking like okay you know i was young so i didn't understand it now that i'm older and i have i'm like wow we really went i got to be a part of history wow that's crazy um i was invited to the inauguration um, in this presidential youth leadership conference. And so I got to be at the inauguration. I watched it live. And I remember seeing people weeping. Like there was people all around me, they were weeping. And I was just standing there like, it's cold. You know what I'm saying? But now that I'm older, I'm like, yeah, okay. So we knew who Barack and Michelle were. You know what I'm saying? I know who the Obamas are, but I never knew who Michelle was. Just Michelle. Um, not Michelle, the first lady. Not Michelle, Sasha and Malia's mom. Not Michelle, Bobo's owner, but Michelle. Um, and y'all, after watching this documentary, I love me some Michelle. That girl is a bad mamma jamma. Shut your mouth. Um, so the documentary, like the first question of the documentary is, on your last day in the White House, did you cry? Like, what was happening? She said, actually, on the last day of the White House, uh, Sasha and Malia's friends wanted to stay over. Um, they wanted to do it one more time. And so the day of the, she's like, the day of us leaving the White House, I'm waking up, I'm running the kids around like, hey, you got to get out. And she said, and I wanted to cry. She said, I just chose not to cry because if I cried, it would have communicated to the public something else. She said, and so... We finally get up, we get dressed, and she says, and we get on Air Force One. And she said, as soon as I get on Air Force One, I sob for 30 minutes. And she said, but I didn't sob. <laughs> she said, I, I, she's like, I didn't sob because I was sad. She said, I sobbed because this was the end of me having to be perfect. For the past eight years, I had to be perfect, and this was the end of an era. And I looked, and I'm watching the TV like, oh, my God. You're right. She said everything she did was under a microscope. Um, when she first started the campaign and she was speaking for Barack, they painted her as an angry black woman. They took her fist pump with her husband out of context saying it was a racial gesture. Her whole entire life was on a microscope for eight years and she smiled through it. Glamorous girl, a, a true queen, a true queen. And so um, for one hour and 29 minutes, as you're watching this, you're just wrapped up in her life and you're like, wow. Like I think for me, the reason why I loved every bit of this documentary is because I knew her as Barack's wife, right? But before she was ever Barack's wife, the girl was bad. And she talks about that in the documentary. Okay, so she, her brother went to Princeton. She went to Princeton. Um, she even said that there was a counselor who told her that she didn't think she'd get into Princeton. And she's like, oh, well, she got in. And before she met Barack, she was a lawyer. Um, she had her own 
thing before she met this man okay and she says that she's like before i met barack i was this i was supposed to mentor barack and she said and when we got together i realized that i had to know who i was or he was going to be a wave that would oversweep me so i had to stand on my own two feet i had to know who i was and i'm like message ladies He's a perk, not a not a plan, okay? You need to know who you are. You need to know what you come to, with the table with. Bring your own sauce so when you meet him, y'all just conjoin together instead of him being your whole entire life. And she said that. She's like, I had a life before he came. Um, and, you know, she was very successful. And the reason why she was so successful is because her dad kind of pushed her to that. Her dad passed away from MS, but um, he pushed her to that. So her dad, she said her dad was super duper smart, but because he was black and they grew up in an era where black people weren't allowed cert to do certain things, he pushed them. Um, she said that he pushed them to go to Princeton. He pushed them to be successful because he wanted to make sure that they could get the opportunities that he never got. And I was like, God, the whole family's great. Like even from the dad to the whole family's amazing. They grew up on the South side of Chicago. They were in these spaces that black Black people weren't allowed to be in and killing it killing it okay um so in the documentary um of course you know she talks about Sasha and Malia but that's not the whole documentary like you know she's a mom but it's not her whole life another message like just because you a mom get you a life outside of your kids which I love and you know Sasha and Malia are in there for all of 10 minutes but she talks about it she was like when I first got married um I chose, she's like, I chose to stop doing law. She said, because I felt like I, that's what I needed to do. I couldn't handle it all. Um, and so she said she went to marriage counseling um, because she was trying to figure out how Barack was still going to the gym and they had kids. And she said, instead of getting upset with Barack, she just was like, let me go get in the gym too. Let me find my own happiness in the midst of this marriage and that was another nugget like baby you gotta produce your own happiness this man can't be the source of your happiness you gotta find happiness in this marriage as well there were so many nuggets guys just so so many nuggets while i'm watching i'm like this is so so rich so good now one of my favorite parts of the documentary um of course was when brock came out and was like you know this is my beyonce to jay-z super cute but one of my favorite favorite moments was the fact that she had created spaces for black girls to come and talk to her. I don't know if it was before the section or whatever, but they had these sections in the documentary of like small groups. And in the small groups, the black girls are like asking her questions like, how do I not become a statistic? Or how do I um, make sure I stand out in the crowd? Or, or, and then one of the girls, she was Latina, she said, I don't really even know why I'm sitting, I'm sitting here. She's like, because I'm not the president of this club. She's like, I go to school, I work and I come home. She, and Michelle said, but why do you work? And she said, I work because my dad is sick and da, 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 da. And she said, and that's why you're here. She's like, you're not just a common space, you matter. And to me, I wanted to cry at this moment, but I didn't um, because there's sometimes we feel like as black women or women in general, there's no space for us. And she created space like, it's not just Oprah and Gail and Michelle. There's space for you too. And I loved this dialogue because most girls want to grow up to be like Rihanna or Beyonce. And I'm like, baby, you ain't got talent like Rihanna and Beyonce. Or, you know, they want to grow up and be like these different people. But to those girls in the room, they're like, I want to be like Michelle. Like, how do I make myself? She's literally the most influential black woman in the world, one of them. And she didn't do it by shaking her butt. She didn't do it. She did it. Well, because she was married to this amazing man, but before she was ever married to him, she had a voice. She had something to say. Um, and I was just blown away and baffled. And I was just like, wow, a true queen. In the documentary, she says something so amazing. She said, I came from the mountaintop. Let me make sure I get it right now. She said, I'm coming from the mountaintop to tell you not to listen to the ones telling you you don't belong. They don't even know how they got here. Dang. In other words, stop worrying about the people at the table who are telling you you can't have a seat. They don't even know how they got a seat. Do your thing. Go to college. Get a degree. Make something of yourself. Make who you are matter because you do matter. Y'all, I just was so like, oh, man, I loved the documentary. I loved it because she showed how they painted her as this angry black woman and she overcame. Um, they told her she was too loud and she needed to do this and she didn't quiet her space. She just became herself. And so in the documentary, one of the girls asked her, um, how is it going back to you know what you are now? And she said, I can't go back. She said, the life I had before um, this 
no longer exists. She said, there was never me going back. This is my new normal. So how do I adapt to my new normal? And I was like, that's so crazy. Like literally America kind of took her life in a way. Like we kind of just stripped her from it because she didn't matter. She said that she was like, we were normal people and my kids grew up here and I, I I grew up like we all grew up and she's like and I had a life before the White House and so now my life is just a little bit altered it was just so good y'all like I think Netflix did a great job um like I was thoroughly pleased um it wasn't one of those documentaries where I was like who I'm bored no from the time I sat down to the time I got up I was inspired like I felt like this one was for women like this was for me black women um young women like if i had a daughter i would make her sit down and watch this with me again and again and again so she could build her confidence in who she is because it's literally what she was doing she was creating a space for you to be who a true queen a true queen like a true queen i loved it um I'm gonna go read the book. Um, I have it on my Kindle, I just hadn't had time. I'm gonna read the book. And you know, I kind of understand like when uh, people were saying like, oh, Michelle should be uh, Joe Biden's first lady or Joe Biden's uh, vice president. I understand why she doesn't. She Y'all done took eight years of her life. She ain't, she ain't giving y'all no more. And, and I agree with that. Like, like, just like if Beyonce never gave us another album, I'd be okay because Beyonce has given us so much of her life and you don't know how much it is to sacrifice. You know what I'm saying? Like we just see the glitz and the glam but we never count up how much they it costs for them to have this glitz and glam life. Like you just see her on the news shaking hands and kissing the babies, but you don't know how much confidence it took for her to stand there. You don't know how much she sacrificed for it. Like she misses her dad every day. Um, her life is forever changed. She has a detail wherever she goes. It's just not, it's different. And I think sometimes this was a, I think sometimes we need a perspective of like, you don't really know what it is to be an alum. Like you want the fame, but you don't know how much it costs like love your level you're in the lane you're in the space you're in even the time like if nobody knows your name that's great because if there's a day that where they will know your name they're going to scandalize you possibly they're going to do whatever they can to break you and you can't break oh <sighs> i hope y'all like it like go watch it if you haven't seen it like if you have let's chat about it because it's so good it just dropped today but you guys that's all i have we'll be back in the corner probably with another review i love y'all so much we'll talk soon bye